You've probably heard it before. One day, we'll leave this place. We'll conquer the stars, build ships that drift between galaxies, find new homes beyond the cold reach of our sun. But what if that's a lie? What if this dream, this fantasy of cosmic escape, isn't our destiny at all? What if we're already where we're meant to stay? Look around. Every satellite we've launched, every rover we've sent, is still orbiting a single star, the solar system. The truth is, we've never left. Not really. Voyager 1, humanity's most distant object, launched in 1977, and it's just barely brushing the edge. 48 years, and we're still here. The stars we see at night, they might as well be ghosts. Because space isn't just empty, it's hostile, it's vast, and it's moving away. So here's the question, what if we're trapped? Not by choice, not by failure, but by the laws of physics themselves. A prison with no walls, only distance, and maybe no way out. They say space is empty. That's not true. Space is full of time, and time is what kills the dream. You see, the nearest star, Proxima Centauri, is just over four light years away. That doesn't sound too bad, does it? Until you realize what that really means. Four light years. That's 40 trillion kilometers. And nothing we've ever built has even come close. Voyager 1, launched in 1977, is the farthest thing humanity has ever sent. It's still transmitting. But after nearly five decades, it hasn't even left our neighborhood. At its current speed, it would take more than 70,000 years to reach the nearest star. That's longer than civilization. Imagine a ship, adrift for the 10 millennia, through cold, through silence, with no one listening. What would be left by the time it arrives? Would anyone even know it left? The distance doesn't just separate us from other stars. It separates us from the meaning of the journey. Because when time stretches that far, the mission dies. Long before the craft ever does, and even if we dream of going faster, there's a problem. A simple, cruel rule of the universe. To go faster, you need more energy, but not a little more. Double the speed, quadruple the fuel, 10 times faster, 100 times the cost. And space doesn't play fair, because the universe itself is expanding. Every star we aim for is drifting away. Not slowly, relentlessly. Even light, the fastest thing we know, can't catch some of them anymore. They've crossed a boundary, a line we can't follow. They still shine. We still see them, but they're already gone. That's the part no one tells you. We're not just trying to reach a destination. We're chasing something that's fleeing. And maybe that's the real prison. We thought the answer was just a better engine. Something faster, stronger. Something that could turn the impossible into Tuesday. But then we built them, and one by one, they all broke under the weight of the void. Voyager 1 moves at 17 kilometers per second. That's fast, here, on Earth. But in space, it's still crawling. The problem isn't just speed, it's energy, and how much it takes to get anywhere. Chemical propulsion, fire and pressure works for leaving Earth, but it runs out fast. You'd need mountains of fuel just to reach a fraction of light speed, and you can't carry mountains in a spacecraft. So we tried something else. Ion propulsion, tiny pulses of electricity pushing atoms out the back. It works slowly, like a whisper pushing a freight train. It takes years to build up speed, useful in theory, useless for escaping the solar system. Then we imagine solar sails, thin metallic sheets pushed by sunlight or laser beams. The Breakthrough Starshot project wants to use this, aiming powerful lasers from Earth to push a chip-sized probe to Proxima Centauri. If it works, and that's a big if, it could get there in just over 20 years. But there's a catch. It can't stop. A flash past another star with no way to slow down, no way to look back. Even fusion, the power of stars, is still science fiction. We haven't built one that works, let alone one that fits on a ship. And as for warp drives, wormholes, or bending space, they remain what they've always been. Clever math, and nothing more. We don't lack imagination. We lack reality. 
And the truth is painful. Maybe the technology won't save us. Maybe it never could, because you can't cheat the laws of physics. Let's pretend we solve the distance. Let's say we build a ship, one that moves fast enough, smart enough, strong enough to escape the pull of home. Even then, we're not ready. The real problem isn't just out there, it's in here. The human body was never meant to drift. Our skin was shaped by air and gravity, our bones by weight, our minds by noise, by sunlight. Take all that away, and something breaks. Radiation slices through the walls of a ship like whispers through glass. It tears at DNA. It rewrites cells. It burns without fire. We are fragile creatures held together by pressure, temperature, and balance. And space has none of that. Even Earth's magnetic field can't follow us. Out there, we're naked. We've tried shielding, tested polymers, simulated exposure, but nothing lasts forever and space doesn't get tired. Then there's the silence. Not the kind you find in a quiet room, the kind that presses on your thoughts. Isolation isn't a condition, it's a force, one that bends the mind. Astronauts in orbit talk about the overview effect, a sense of awe, a shift in perspective, but they also talk about the dreams, the confusion, the loneliness that creeps in, even with voices in your ear. Now stretch that from weeks, to decades. A crew floating alone, with no sunrise, no rain, no seasons, only metal, monitors, and the hum of systems they hope never fail. Even conversations break down. Light takes time to travel. A message to Proxima Centauri? Four years there. Four more to return. By then, the question has already died. So we imagine generation ships. Vast self-sustaining vessels where generations live and die in motion. The first crew leaves Earth. Their children inherit the journey. Their grandchildren inherit the burden. No sky, no soil, no history, except the one written in maintenance logs and course corrections. They're born to a mission, not a planet. What happens when they stop believing in the destination? When space becomes home and Earth becomes a myth? Do you think that's survival? or just another kind of extinction? I'd love to know what you think, so leave a comment. Tell me, if you were born on a ship drifting through the void, would you still believe in the journey? Or would you start to wonder if the mission ever made sense at all? Then there's the idea of sleep, cryogenics, hibernation, put the body on pause, skip the centuries, wake up in another system. But we don't know how, not without damage, not without risk. The body forgets how to heal. The brain forgets how to wake. Maybe we'll get there, or maybe we won't, because maybe we're not designed to leave. Not because we lack the tools, but because we carry too much of Earth inside us. We're not just bodies, we're ecosystems, bacteria, hormones, a thousand invisible dependencies tuned to a single planet. Take away the sun, the gravity, the wind on your skin, and you lose more than comfort. You lose coherence, and in that loss, you forget who you are. We leave everything behind, but bring ourselves. And that, in the end, might be what dooms us. Because no matter how far we go, we carry the limits of what we are. We weren't built for drifting. We were built for Earth, and Earth doesn't follow. Maybe we were never meant to leave. Maybe the stars were never invitations. Just distant fires, beautiful, unreachable, and cold. We've tried. We've launched machines into the dark, but they always look back. They always remain tethered to the idea of home. And maybe that's not a failure. Maybe that's the point. We are creatures born from a thin layer of air, clinging to a fragile world, shaped by its rhythm, held by its warmth. And every time we try to escape, we carry that gravity with us. What if the universe isn't empty, just unreachable? What if every civilization, every voice that ever looked up is stuck in its own bubble of light? Each one dreaming of contact, of travel, of more, but always finding silence. Not because no one is out there, but because no one ever gets out. The prison isn't made of stone. It doesn't need walls. It's made of distance, of time. 
a cage shaped by physics and by the fragile biology of dreamers. And yet, we still look up, we still wonder. And maybe that wonder is enough. Because even if we're trapped, we're still reaching, still asking, still listening. So if this silence speaks to you, leave a trace, subscribe to the channel. And if you want to go further, consider becoming a member. For now, it's a way to support this project, but very soon it will unlock something more. Exclusive series of videos made only for those who are still watching, even when the rest of the world looks away. Because one day, another voice may call out from the dark. And when it does, we'll want to be here.